Hi everyone, I'm out and about today doing a little bit more wildlife photography. I've come down to Flinbridge Woods and waited it out a little while to see if I could get the Kingfisher, but no joy. So I'm going to head to Lockwell Dam, which is another place that's right on my doorstep, where the lighting conditions are a little bit better and hopefully I can broaden my horizons a little bit. Quite often you can see things like cormorants and Canadian geese and loads of different things. So by going there, I'm not going to be waiting around so much in between. I've been thinking recently about where I want to go with this and I've just recently bought the 150 600 Sigma Contemporary and for the time being I'm going to be focusing a lot more on wildlife photography. Um, doesn't mean that I'm not going to be doing landscapes as much but it's just something that I want to try and get my teeth into, learn the lens a little bit and for me, it's just a little bit re more rewarding because you never know what you're going to get. Um, recently as well, I kind of messed up, um, dropped my external hard drive and it's corrupt and I didn't have backups of any of my photos. So I'm kind of using this to really get my teeth into, um, start again and it's a good excuse to up my game a little bit. So I'm going to head off to Lockwell and see what we can get. <laughs> Just arrived at Lockwell Dam and in the time it's taken to get here it's gone from wall to wall sunshine to heavy showers but that's not necessarily a bad thing um, normally as a wildlife photographer you shoot to the conditions so I wouldn't go out unless it was good weather but just because it's raining doesn't mean that the wildlife's not going to be as active so I'm going to think outside the box a little bit see if any opportunities present themselves if they do then that's great but if not, nothing lost. So I'm gonna set it out. I've got a good vantage point sat here in the car as well. Just this second stopped raining, so I'm gonna have a quick scout around, see what I can find. I'm hoping to try and get a few birds in flight today as well, so I'm gonna make the most out of the lighting conditions whilst I've got them. That's one of the best things about Lockwell is that the lighting is always pretty good, which gives me quite a few more opportunities than I would have got if I'd have waited it out at Plumbridge Woods. So let's have a quick look and see what we can find. <laughs> That was really strange. In the space of about 30 seconds, there was a butterfly which took my attention. I um, was just about to reach for the camera to get a shot. And then from nowhere, a heron flew past really quickly. Caught me off guard, didn't have my camera in my hand. And after that, a buzzard came from nowhere as well. So it's all in the space of about 30 seconds or so. I think I've managed to get some shots of the buzzard. Um, but I'm going to have to check them out in a minute, see how they've come out and see how they turn out once I get them on the computer as well. Um, but it just goes to show that you always have to be prepared and even when conditions aren't really going that well, unless you put yourself into that position, you're never really going to get the shot. So I'm hoping I've got the buzzard quite clearly. It was having a bit of a tussle with a raven as well, which I'm hoping I've got on camera. Um, but yeah, all seems to be picking up a little bit, which is good. The reason for recording this today is I've been scouring YouTube looking for uh, videos of wildlife photographers in the UK. And there are some, but they're pretty few and far between. Obviously, there's the greats like David Jarrow, who goes across to Africa and gets these amazing compositions of elephants and giraffes and, and you get Morton Hilmer, who's another really talented photographer. Uh, he's recently done some stuff in Scottish Highlands, which has been amazing to watch. Um, but again, most of his stuff is based like in the Arctic and, and overseas. So I'm just trying to make the most of what we've got on our doorstep. 
and see how we can make wildlife uh, photography in the UK a little bit more exciting and make the most of what we've got. Just had a quick look on the back of the camera to see what I've got today and there's not really anything to stand out so I'm going to have to try and think of some other ideas to try and make sure that I've got something to take away from today as it stands there really isn't much at all if anything um, so I'm in two minds about whether to stay here or whether to go back to Plimbridge so, um, like I said earlier there's always the opportunity of getting the Canadian geese here it's just whether or not you can get them doing something interesting um, one of the things he about here as well is the fact that you're kind of looking down on them which is what I always try and avoid in wildlife shots just kind of gives that a shift of power if you're looking down on something it comes across as if you're in kind of like an artificial setting like a zoo for example um so yeah i am going to see what i can find here for another 10 more minutes or so the weather's taking another bit of a turn but we'll just see how that goes and if there's nothing i should start thinking of other ideas so rather than go anywhere else i've decided to head home and do a bit of editing see what i've got the one that I'm looking forward to editing most are the ones with the swans and their young. Um, so yeah, all in all it's not been a great day, but that's kind of what wildlife photography is about. You can always just guarantee results. If it was something that anyone could do, it would kind of take the magic out of it. Um, and plus the fact that everyone would do it if it was that easy. So I'm going to pop up the photos I've got now and hopefully you like them.